If you've been in any part of the history community for any length of time, I'm willing to bet you've heard about a series by the name of Girls und Panzer. And at risk of permanently filling my comment sections full of people calling me a weeb, I want to talk about why I think the series isn't as appreciated as it should be, and why it might just be the greatest piece of tank-related content ever produced. Before you roll up your sleeves to write a long-winded post about why it will never be better than your tank movie of choice, I ask that you at least let me have a chance to explain my opinion. If you disagree after that, feel free to call me whatever names you're already practically spilling onto your keyboard. For those of you who haven't watched it yet, or may have somehow never heard of Girls in Panzer before, it's an anime and manga series about shocker girls and tanks. I'm going to give a spoiler warning now if you plan to watch it because I'll be giving a basic rundown of the plot for the series and movie, both are on Netflix so go watch them if you haven't yet. I won't be discussing Das Finale in this video since as I'm writing this only part of it has been released. The series starts out by introducing us to the main character Miho, who we follow along with the rest of the tank crew she meets through school. In the GUP universe, tank duels are part of everyday life since they've been turned into a sort of sport played by schools which they call Senshado. I probably didn't say that right. You follow the tank team of the ORI school as they compete with the other schools in an attempt to save their school from being shut down. Each school loosely represents a faction from the Second World War and with the exception of ORI, tends to use vehicles from that particular nation. Obviously, in the end, they win and save the day, with the movie being pretty similar in plot just taking place after the initial series, with a couple minor differences. I'm not going to say the plot is insanely well written or groundbreaking because, in all honesty, it's fairly cut and dry, nothing to really write home about, but that's not what I'm making this video to talk about anyways. What makes me believe this is the best tank-related media ever put to screen is best broken down into three parts. The first of these being the way it introduces you to the tanks. I found a good quote that perfectly fits what I'm talking about here. I found this in an interview with Mike Rowe, who is a fairly well-known TV host, and in it he brings up something his father, who is a history teacher, would tell him. He said, The first thing you have to do if you're going to teach history is find a way to make it interesting to kids who really don't care. That quote really clicked with me. One of the most difficult things you can do is get people interested in history, because like he said, kids really don't care, and that extends to adults as well. But if you show it to them in a way that is entertaining or interests them, you open the door to being able to teach them about it. Think back to the last time you tried to get a friend to watch a war movie with you. Unless they're also interested in the subject matter, it was probably hard because generally they tend to be fairly slow paced and boring. Now obviously there are exceptions, but I think you understand what I mean. Girls in Panzer solves this problem by approaching it from an entirely new angle. Not only does it teach the person watching about the tanks, but it does it in a way that doesn't feel dull or boring, which is one of the things most history-related content just can't do. Rather than the normal method of a gritty action movie, it flips the history aspects into a more easy-to-watch and casual viewer-friendly experience. To give you an example from the show, in the 11th episode, the girls have an encounter with the legendary mouse. This tank is pretty well known if you have an interest in tanks, but what about for someone who doesn't? Think what it would be like seeing this as someone who knows only the smallest bit about the subject. Seeing that massive machine moving into frame and the sheer scale of it compared to the tanks we've already seen in the series. It creates an enormous wow factor. How does this relate to what I'm talking about, you may be saying? Put simply, just the fact that the mouse appears on screen might be enough to stir up their curiosity to learn more. With nothing more than a few minutes of screen time, it can plant a seed of interest into the casual viewer's mind. From there, all it would take is an off-the-cuff search on the internet, and there's a good chance of them learning a lot more about the subject. This isn't just me thinking this either. People way smarter than me talk about just this sort of thing all the time. One of the main ones that comes to mind is Neil deGrasse Tyson, who is nearly always talking about how important curiosity is to get people to learn. Without going too deep into this, it's due to the fact that by presenting someone with a small piece of a bigger topic, in this case a weird historical vehicle, they get the natural desire to find out more. Try as you might, you just can't shove information down someone's throat because they have to want to learn. This is something I practice with my own content. With my Curse by Design series, the idea isn't to teach you everything about a specific vehicle. My goal is to introduce something you may have never heard of before or don't know that much about. From there, anyone who wants to know more will be primed to explore either more videos or dig for more information about what I was talking about. 
This has been a really complicated way of saying Girls Zoom Panzer does this phenomenally well, and it does it in a way that just about anyone can enjoy. It clearly works, too. A look at any fan site for the series is full of information about the tanks, and even ones that aren't in the series but fans have stumbled across. GUP isn't just great for helping bring more people into the history community, it also provides a way for history buffs to experience their favorite tanks in action. The thing GUP does better than any other media are the tank-on-tank -tank engagements. With live-action movies and even video games, there's often limits to what the directors or developers can do. A good example of this is with Fury, one of the greatest tank films ever made. Despite everything great about that film, there were still a lot of limitations to what they can show due to budget restraints and the actual tanks themselves. In the behind the scenes of the film, you can get a glimpse of what sort of steps they had to take just to make sure they kept Tiger 131 safe during filming because of how fragile and valuable the tank is. David was set on getting an actual Tiger into the movie, which has never been done on film before. There's only one running Tiger in the world, and it lives in the Bobbington Tank Museum in southern England. With animation, there's no need for that. You can show tanks being shot apart, wheels flying off, tracks being shredded, and way more because there's no risk. They're just drawings, yet they can still portray the same things and at a fraction of the cost. Now before you comment about the series has massively unrealistic parts like the tank drifting scene, yes. I'm not trying to say the series is 100% realistic, but the thing is, it doesn't have to be. The setting they put the tanks in doesn't need anything to be realistic to work. I mean, come on. The tanks are being driven around by high school girls as a school sport. You're really gonna tell me knocking out a mouse by driving a tank up onto the engine deck is pushing it? The entire show is massively unrealistic, and yet even as a massive history nerd, it keeps its value. Many people who may see a clip out of context from the show are quick to write it off due to this. What most don't consider is that history buffs are a minority when it comes to both large and small screen entertainment. So rather than expect everything to be 100% accurate, we should instead praise what shows and movies do get right. Just look at the fantastic models of all the tanks in the series as an example. Every single one is almost perfectly done with excellent animation for their movement. Maybe they don't behave exactly the way they would have when they fought in World War II, but by focusing on getting things historically accurate where they don't take away from the experience for the casual viewer, it creates a brilliant blend of history and entertainment. And that's what this is. It's entertainment. Now instead of something that's limited to a small group of people, you have a massively appealing series which allows it to continue producing more content everyone can enjoy. Rather than a standalone film like Fury, you now have a franchise. I don't know about you, but more tanks are always a good thing. The last minor thing I'd like to mention is that Girls in Panzer also tackles something very few tank films do. It humanizes the people within the tanks. This is something that only a few films have done and even fewer if any have done for both sides of the fight. Fury is one that does this very well with the main crew but being able to see the reactions on both sides really drives it home in my opinion. No matter which battle you watch in the show, you'll always get to see both sides of the fight. This not only introduces characters, but I feel it helps to remind people that these tanks were crewed by real people on both sides. It also shows some of what it would have been like to be crammed inside one during combat with each crew member performing their individual tasks. But I'm really interested to see what you guys and gals think of this though. Do you agree with me, or do you think I'm as far from the truth as a Varibu from a shower? Let me know in the comments. And if you liked this style of video, let me know as well. I've been considering doing a sort of movie review type series around films involving tanks, so if that's something you'd like to see, drop a like and a sub so I know you're interested. Anyways, I'll leave you to write your comments calling me a weeb and whatever amazing names you've come up with during the duration of the video, and I will see you in the next one.